Hello, friends. I am slightly under the weather just for the intro, luckily not for the video. This is a guide through Gamergate, everybody. That's right. Buckle up. Listen to the entire thing. It's very comprehensive. It is, of course, from my guest Grimm's perspective. That's his nickname, but that's what he goes by, and I love it. Anyway, so yeah, I speak with Grimm for about an hour and a half about Gamergate, and he was there for the whole thing and watched it and is a sort of eyewitness to it. So I would love to hear what you guys think. Uh, you can leave me a comment. If you know anyone who would be good for me to interview who would be open to chatting for the other side, uh, Grim is on the pro side, um, I would love to get a uh, another perspective. So you can also leave that in the comments if you think of anyone. And on to the video, everyone. Hello, Grim. Hi. Th thanks for uh, chatting with me today. You're welcome. And I just love the, I love your, your name. <laughs> Can you just give a little, so that's not your given name. No. Can you give a little? background as to where that came from <laughs> so um it's actually a relatively common nickname in the kind of um goth metal industrial scene or, or whatever but i i didn't get it from there okay. um when when i was at, at college i was kind of your stereotypical uh depressed goth type figure and at the time the slang was for, for something that was sad or or disgusting <laughs> or, or whatever was ooh that's grim oh, so okay. yeah and because my first name's james which is shortened to jim so grim jim kind of it's a little bit went, of a went together nicely so mm, okay. yeah, i i decided to adopt it and make it my own so okay well I, well it's i i actually just think of like the grim fairy tales which yeah I think yeah, the, the word I, came I'm from. a writer, so mm. that, yeah, that fits as well. So it fits nicely. Okay. Okay, so I, you, Gamergate is what we are discussing to just mm. get that subject out right now, because that's what the whole thing's going to be about. So you have written a book on the subject. There's so much that a book can be written about it, is what that kind of showed me how much there is to this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, what? so I I read. So you start off the book in well, I guess a, in the fashion of your nickname in a sort of grim way. You talk about the amount that uh, Gamergate has affected you. You start off talking about a, an attempted suicide. Mm. Could you go into that a little bit? Um. So. I've probably had um, fairly severe depression for quite a bit of my life, but I've only been uh, properly diagnosed since about 2007. Um, and there's been a few, you know, really dark sort of incidents along that. Usually there's not a trigger, um, but, but during Gamergate, mm -hmm. I felt so harassed, so marginalized so let down by the creative community that i otherwise call home that it, it really drove me into a really uh deep pit of depression um res resulting in in a suicide attempt um and i should make it clear at this point that i'm i am and was pro gamergate not anti you're you're mostly here that kind of harassment narrative coming coming the other way mm -hmm. um so i wanted to to open the book in a way that was deeply personal um it would disarm people a little mm -hmm. um make them perhaps a little more sympathetic a little less hostile and would would demonstrate to the reader that there were at least at the very least problems on on both sides of the divide and people getting hurt and 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 messed up on both sides mm -hmm. because the the narrative has otherwise been very one-sided yes. i mean I, I i got through that in no small part due to the 
support and help and friendship that I got from the Gamergate community. You kind of stepped in and, and, and filled in the gap of the people that I'd been betrayed by or, or lost as friends as a, as a result of my involvement. Mm -hmm. So I, I saw a very much more positive side to Gamergate and a, a much more negative side um, to, to the opposite side of the conflict than, than maybe a lot of people did. Okay, so if we were going to start, because there's quite a bit of, um, I guess, ground to be set. I think one of your chapters, is it called like Archduke Franz Ferdinand or something like that? Yeah, yes, Fra Franz Ferdinand. <laughs> Franz yeah. Sorry, yeah, Franz Ferdinand. So, so like a World War One sort of how did this even happen feeling? Like that's kind of yeah. where I, I, I honestly, some people may have heard of the word, never even heard of the word, heard of the word plus Anita Sarkeesian, Zoe Quinn, and Gamer Dudes. Like, that's yeah. kind of my... And then I think I have journalists in there somewhere. So that's sort of where <laughs> I'm at, and I think a lot of people might be at, and maybe even less. So do you want to set the stage a bit maybe with the moral panics maybe is that a good uh, yeah or, or i think earlier? i do i do think it's really important to um contextualize gamergate in the kind of historical arc of, of this kind of thing happening okay and i do i do think that the, the reaction to gamergate rather than gamergate itself does fit this kind of pattern of moral panics that we've had mm -hmm. um so the, the the kind of uh, geek and nerd communities, the, the technological communities, have always been sort of breaking new ground and then getting a kind of um, reactionary backlash mm -hmm. throughout, throughout their history. So you know, novels were considered scandalous at, at the time when, when novels were a new thing due to the relative cheapness of printing and oh, I didn't uh, know the, ri that. the rise in literacy. Yeah, they they were considered scandalous, and there were you know there were questions asked whether women should be allowed to read novels. Oh, oh like we we wouldn't want to have ideas and start thinking. It, it, to quote exactly. Gaston from Beauty and the Beast. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So um, yeah, that, it it goes right the way back. Um, but specifically t with reference to to nerd media. Okay. I think the first big one was probably uh, comics in the nineteen thirties and and forties. Nice. There was this psychiatrist um frederick wortham who uh wrote a book called seduction of the innocent about comics at the time oh uh, uh, comics prior to the comics code prior to that book were actually amazingly groundbreaking and uh and and really interesting there were lots there were, were already lots of minorities women characters uh sort of flirting with homosexual <laughs> material okay, the horror wow. The horror comics were really gory and, and and genuinely scary, but because the medium was seen as something for children, oh. it kind of touched off this 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 moral panic, um, and that oh. that ended up with the with the comics industry bringing in the comics codes. They kind of self regulated as a as a way of dealing with it. Okay. And as a, and as a result, we kind of lost all that amazing stuff. There's a there's a good online article by I think it's Saladin Ahmed. Oh. Um, on on comics prior to, prior to Wortham and the Comics Code, okay. which is kind of odd because Ahmed is now the kind of person <laughs> promulgating the, the the current moral panics. Um, oh. Then you, then then you can kind of skip skip ahead a bit. We'll 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 skip over a few things. For me, my my involvement in games is more to do with analog games, things like Dungeons and Dragons okay. or other role playing games, board games, things like that. When that took off in the sort of mid to late 70s it was in universities for the mm -hmm. most part that was mm -hmm. seen as you know very much a, a young people's thing and there were a couple of uh scandals around it which seems ridiculous looking back but there was um a kid who got lost in steam tunnels under his under his college or university okay that it did not have to do with the game <laughs> That's what they say that he was, you know, exploring the tunnels because it was like exploring a dungeon. There was even a film made of it, one of Tom Hanks's first ever films, Mazes and Monsters. Oh, and it's, it's just it's just absurd. <laughs> Pre but this went on for ages. Yeah, okay. yeah. And um, it was so so 
tabletop role playing games were accused of being satanic, of causing kids to commit suicide. Okay, um, okay, yeah. because I grew up in a conservative Christian home and like Dungeons and Dragons was totally like listed with Ouija boards as yeah. like and I've actually um not I didn't know what I was like, okay. Like I didn't know, I didn't really I didn't know until like young adulthood. I think it was like uh the show Community, they did a, a role play game or they yeah. did they did it and I was like, that's it? What? Yeah. <laughs> like that's well, it? it? Can... Because it had monsters and magic and demons know, and things Christian, that you that you would but defeat. The conservative but... Christian like groups love Lord of the Rings, man. Like we we're all about Tolkien and like. Well, uh, to Lewis. Tolkien was a good, good Christian boy and yeah. uh, good friends with C.S. Lewis, so I guess he gets a pass. I guess so. <laughs> In a way that it yeah. looks so similar to me, though. Like, anyways, I actually kind of I'm like I want to play. <laughs> I do. We'll, we'll, we'll talk like we'll talk later. Okay, 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 yes. But okay, I am But sorry, anyway, I, 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 so, so so there was a moral panic around Dungeons and Dragons. There was a moral panic around that. That that blew up sort of late seventies, right the way through the eighties into okay. the early nineties. So, you know, I started playing quite young. I got involved in that. This was pre internet, but there even on this side of the Atlantic there were you know, game clubs weren't being allowed to hold meetings in church halls or scout halls or, or school rooms and so on because of all the fuss about it. Mm. There were even book burnings. Yeah, that's oh, ridiculous. What? You, you, yeah, you, disco sucks was one thing, but burning books is, is oh. something else in, entirely. But yeah, I, I got really involved in the kind of pushback against that. Okay. And so that that's kind of my model for resisting these these moral panics. Okay. Um, the whole community came together. The, the games media came together. Um, you know, proper psychological studies and so on were done and showed that there was nothing to any of this. And that oh, okay. was that was great. It's like this big unifying nerd myth that, that holds us all together. You know, we fought back against against yes. censorship. Yes. Oh, I love it. That's, okay. Mm -hmm. That's why I have always been. I became really interested in free speech, free expression, and have been involved in that. I mean, you've got other incidents later on. The whole. Um, Fuss around heavy metal music with, mm. and the the PMRC uh, was it Parents Musical Research Council or something oh, okay. in the states. You know, Tipa Gore, um, and you know, trying to censor them. Got a parental advisory sticker on CDs, which yeah. just made them sell better in the of end. Of course, right? <laughs> so, yeah. Um, and also in the nineties, you had uh, a big fuss about violent games. Okay. Um, Mortal Kombat. There was a big moral right. panic, moral panic around that, and Grand Theft Auto as well. There was the uh, the lawyer Jack Thompson, who was constantly trying to prosecute games, calling games murder simulators, things like that. Okay. And again, the whole computer gaming community and the computer gaming press and a lot of other sensible people came together and saw that off. Okay. So yeah, in in the computer game community, you have that same kind of mythological resistance mm -hmm. to to censorship mm -hmm. that so animated the the tabletop gaming community and then things went quiet for a while okay um and good, then, good but then a sort of like why yeah, the calm so that, of the storm right <laughs> <laughs> so that that gives us yeah most of the context there's other things we could go into okay but then around 2010 or so this this whole new wave of political correctness began to start up yeah. and, and to begin with it wasn't too much of a too much of a problem you know they would just avoid the games or say their criticism and and leave it be mm -hmm. and the gaming community was still pretty unified against censorship after the whole debacle in in the 90s okay. but then as we as we as we came to the to the start of gamergate a lot of people were involved in the indie gaming scene now Strictly speaking, that just means independently produced games. But just like indie music has a certain, you know, quality and feel and, and ethos to it. So mm -hmm. indie games had a kind of similar ideological bent. Okay. Uh, and the people who were involved in that and the people who were now coming through and being involved in the games media were now approaching their criticism, their reviews and so on very much through an ideological lens. Oh, okay. Uh, and a lot of resentment and annoyance kind of built up. Gamers had been used to reviews being bought and sold. 
<laughs> yeah, oh, a company okay. will a company will give free product to a, to a website or a magazine to review their material, but if you give them a bad review, you know, you're going to lose that kind of privilege. Oh, sounds kind, kind of like bribery. Yeah, kind of has a yeah, writing yeah. feel but to we, it. We, 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 but we were kind of used to that okay. in a way. You, know, you knew not to trust it. There was only a limited amount of protest you can do. Okay. But, the, but these indie game developers were supposed to be different. They were supposed to be uh, more accessible, more more independent, more moral, more more ethical, more more just. And we were also coming to expect the games media to do a better job because they it was shifting online and yeah they weren't as beholden to the advertisers necessarily as they were but a lot of resentment was building up because so much of the the reviewing that was going on so much of the critique of the games that was going on um was ideological okay. in it in its slant it was it was um, not just i don't like this game which would be fine, but I don't like this game, therefore it shouldn't exist, or these are the things I don't like about it, and I now feel the need to justify these as being some huge problem with society. Okay. So into that came uh, Anita Sarkeesian, yeah. the, the big game critic. She's not directly involved in, in Gamergate, but it's important to, to talk about her. Okay. She, she got a colossal amount of money for doing very archly feminist critique, critiques of games. Yes. But yeah. they were incredibly shallow. They didn't show a great deal of knowledge of games or gaming or the industry or the history of games or, or anything. And so gamers were extremely resentful towards her and okay because kind of i've actually watched all of her stuff before i at the time back around i think 2011 12 uh, or was i can't it? remember when she i can't 13, remember when she i don't remember but however many what she, I, I watched all yeah. of her feminist frequency tropes versus women or something like that whatever the name of it is and yeah i mean i i it, you know when you don't know you're watching something that's ideologically possessed? Mm. I didn't know. So, and I am not a gamer or even games player for, for um, <laughs> video games. So I was very yeah. like, I don't know any of this. I am a woman though. So I thought that, so I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, I, I kind of, I didn't come away with too bad of a view. I was just kind of like, oh, okay. There's a lot of stuff that could be maybe revamped here you know violence against women was the thing that kind of stood out the most but i actually just for an example of something that i think she gets wrong just basically archetypes when she talked mm -hmm. about the women um the fe some female characters turning evil that were the victims at, at first but then they actually kind of die yeah. and, and turn into the well, that, the, the devouring mother, right? Like that kind mm. of, a you know, and, uh, you know, the sort of Jungian archetypes of the anima is must possessed or whatever that is. And it's like, oh, that's not, she, 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 she criticized that. And I was, and, and I didn't think of it at the time until I learned about Jungian archetypes from Jordan Peterson. <laughs> like, 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 and yeah. I was like, that's not supposed to be against women. That's a, version of a female archetype of the the dark side side and, and and that's just part of literature you know so anyway i just yeah. so i kind of thought of, i it almost saw it made me think of the games she criticizes having a sort of depth that i didn't even know before you know and i think she doesn't understand it she didn't understand the, well, the symbolism i guess yeah she didn't understand the symbolism the the context the background the the sheer breadth of games um she very much was cherry picking i mean she's she's on record i think you can find it on anita sarkeesian debunked in two minutes or something but she's actually recorded talking about video games saying i don't know anything about them this was a this had been a, around 2010 so how she suddenly got a lifetime of gaming knowledge in the next two years before she started uh, uh, up her series i it just I, seems I like she had. She just decided think. to have a, her feminist. She wanted to look at it through a feminist perspective, and if she yeah. was maybe a bit more. I mean, she, sure, go ahead, but don't. Uh, maybe she should have come at it from a. I'm a feminist, and I want to look into this, and I'm going to look at it this through a feminist framework and lens, as opposed to I'm yeah. a gamer, and here's why I think they're a problem. I think yeah. maybe that's 
where the... Yeah, but the, the, this is where the problem set in. It was clear she didn't know what she was talking about, and for, for good or ill, right. gamers can be kind of gatekeepy. They, they want to know okay. that, you know your, that you know your onions. Okay, okay. So, yeah. so, <laughs> so when you don't, uh, you're going to get some hostility. Uh -huh. And also a lot of her criticisms, a lot of her ideas echoed the kind of things we were, we were hearing from, you know, the, the parents groups or the church or whatever, going back okay. to the, to the, the to the previous panic. panics. Okay. Okay. It's just, she was coming at it from, from feminism and saying these things will make you become a misogynist. Okay. Whereas before it was, these things will make you kill yourself or these oh. things will make you a Satanist or, Right. Yes. So that okay. instantly the hackles go up, everyone gets defensive. Um, but the, the kind of landscape of the industry of, of, of nerd culture had, had changed okay. in, in the intervening period. And a lot of people like her were now in positions in the media and in the games companies and in the HR departments and the PR departments and so on. And the backlash that she got was instantly reframed as harassment and misogyny. So if, if you questioned her in any way, and sure, people were nasty about it. I was going to say, she were... probably got a lot that was. I, like, yeah. you know, it's hard when you say the whole thing is trolls, I guess. I imagine yeah. that there was a lot. I yeah. imagine. <laughs> just just yet... knowing I ha that I did hear a bit about that. I imagine there was a lot, but but then she becomes untouchable for any criticism if you're yeah. a gamer it seems like and and male yeah. because anything you say even if you say it in a in a in a nice way and i i don't see any problem with vociferous disagreement mm -hmm. and i wouldn't want to treat a woman any differently if she's wrong than i would treat a man right if he's wrong <laughs> you right. know but there were plenty of people who did quite well thought out you know lengthy critiques of her critique pointing out where she was wrong okay. and that still got dismissed okay um okay. but we're still not at gamergate right so... still, oh yeah because she honestly i kind of thought it was about her the back back that's because that's who i knew who it was and i didn't that's all i knew about it right at the well, time when it was that... happening <laughs> That brings us to Zoe Quinn, finally. Right, yes, now, the actual woman involved. Well, a lot of people think Gander Gay is to do with her. Oh. But it isn't really. Like I say, she's like the Franz Ferdinand. She's the spark oh, she's that the starts Franz the Ferdinand. war. She's the Archduke, okay. She's the Archduke who gets shot. <laughs> yeah. Now, she was a really quite small-time indie developer. She'd done, um, yeah, a few pretty simple games, kind of things that hardcore gamers are quite derisive of. Okay. She did one called uh, Depression Quest, okay. um, which as a sufferer, I, I, was, I was all for. I was, boot, I was telling everybody about that yeah, oh, game. Yeah, this okay. will help you get an insight. In, it wasn't perfect by any means, but this will help you get an insight into, into what it's like for me. Uh, oh, cool. I even donated money to her. <laughs> uh -huh. Oh, okay. So you can kind of, you're not just like, hey, like women, get out of here. You know, like you're like, I no. literally donated money to it. Literally donated money, signal boosted, followed her on on social media because mm -hmm. uh, I thought she was doing something something useful. Okay. Um, but that game got an enormous, disproportionate amount of kudos from from the mainstream press, as did okay. other things that she'd been involved in. Okay, yeah, indie game, kind of indie darling, sort of sort of okay, thing. Yeah. Guess, it, guess it could be someone's to someone's taste or whatever. Um, but then this post from her ex boyfriend called the Zoe post uh, <laughs> okay. dropped on like 4chan and loads of gaming forums, never else, and it, it just spread like wildfire. Oh, okay, and in it he alleged, and he had you know, had receipts, as they say, as the kids say. He had receipts that showed that she had been sleeping around a lot. Okay, oh, you know, okay. that's... Okay, shoot. Pers personal drama. Who yeah, okay, cares? yeah, I kind of like, oh, the hair in the back of my neck is like, what does that have to do with her game? Yeah, nothing. I, w yeah. I would have said I would have said nothing as well. And, you know, trolls are going to have their field day with, with someone who's, you know, slept around or whatever. Okay. Yeah, there were plenty of memes and, and so on. I was just pretty much ignoring it at the time. I mean, your personal life's your personal life. Right. But then once people started digging through this this 
post that had dropped mm-hmm. and it did seem like the, the poor guy that she'd been dating had essentially been emotionally abused by her for, for some time okay it's just not so good but it emerged that at least a couple of the people that she'd slept with that had been identified were games journalists or indie game developers people within the industry oh. one of whom had written several articles really sort of boosting her up without disclosing that they had a, a relationship okay yeah. now in any kind of journalism if you've got a personal relationship to the person you're writing about you're supposed to to disclose that this is the, so this you can is have some bias sort of filter on like this is someone i am in a relationship with so maybe with a grain of salt yeah yeah so the, the gaming community kind of like turned like the eye of sauron upon, <laughs> oh that's a good image <laughs> Upon the whole kind yeah. of um, sure, gaming, yeah. gaming media, okay, and and started kind of going through all the connections that they had to each other. Oh, this person wrote a whole bunch of articles about this game by this person, who is their roommate and ex lover. Oh, okay, that's interesting. They never disclosed any of that. Or or this person ran a, a crowdfunder for their game for their game that they did as a side project. This person who's uh, in the games media, put a load of money into that project, never disclosed it. And it's just time after time after time, we kept finding all these little bits of corruption, which you can find a lot of them chronicled on deepfreeze.it. Okay. That's not as active a site as it, as it used to be. And, and the wrath of the gamers descended upon the games media. And almost immediately, uh, the Gamers Are Dead articles came out. And that is the point at which Gamergate really started. What are these articles? I've never heard of them before. Um, that's kind of a collective name uh, given to them. Oh, God, I can't remember the name of the the name of the woman who wrote the first one. Yeah, people okay. can find it. But yeah. she wrote this that she wrote this one article and she'd been consulted by mainstream press, uh, The Guardian, to, you know, to hold off saying anything about Gamergate until they talked to her. She dropped this this article, and then almost immediately, about another dozen articles came out saying, "You know, gamer culture is toxic. Gamers are all all misogynist, hate filled people. Look at how they're harassing these these poor this poor innocent woman." Um, okay. And then one after another, different outlets picked up the same story and put out essentially the same article with slightly different spins on it. And this was all over the space of about twenty four to forty eight hours. Okay. Yeah, with everyone singing from the same hymn sheet so quickly with these articles struck people as a bit suspicious. And it did later turn out that some of these journalists had been coordinating on a secret email list. So it was kind of like a big PR move and an attack on the gaming community from the gaming community's own press. So oh, that the just... Indian is it Indian newspapers that you're kind of mentioning? Uh, the Guardian I mentioned. That's, oh no, that's more of a mainstream not, press. But... but this, this, this was web. This was websites. This was mo- okay, mostly. Okay, was... okay. So they usually were, I guess, a f- friend of of the community. That and is that that was supposed to be. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that that's how it was in the past. When something like this kicked off, the gaming press would take the side of the of the gaming community. But now it was a different landscape. Games were much more popular. There was a lot more money in it. There were a lot more. I think frustrated activists and frustrated journalists who wanted to make a difference, who were now part of the gaming press because it was a good foot in the door. Oh, and they saw their difference. opportunity okay. to do activism through the, through their writing. It's just the same problem that there had been for some time with their reviews, and so it all kicked off. But of course, this just pumped more heat into the system, mm-hmm. made made gamers even angrier and more resentful. And yeah, that that's Gamergate from there. That the fight between the press and the gaming community I, is how I would define Gamergate properly. Is it, it would that be how it's defined by say everyone on like pro and anti Gamergate? I guess it, like. Would would someone on the other side say that the fight between gamers and the press? Would they say that, or would that not be the? <sighs> to an extent, they might, but I think they'd be more likely to characterize it as a as a harassment campaign against a women and minority people in the gaming press and gaming development spheres. Okay, that, but, that's how they. But if we were going to boil it down, it would be 
press, gamer press, and then the gaming community. Yeah, and the mainstream press as well. And mainstream uh, press, okay. But, uh, that that's tricky. I, what's the saying? Don't attribute to malice that which can be attributed to incompetence. I think that's Hanlon's razor. Oh, I think. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well. Um, okay. So, can you explain? So, so mainstream media like the television and the newspapers and so on, most of them don't have a clue about online culture <laughs> or gaming culture. Right. So they just basically went with the with the narrative from the gaming press who were the people being attacked so who were obviously quite defensive and unwilling to admit to any wrongdoing on their behalf so the mainstream press took up the the harassment narrative okay so okay now we're here we're at gamergate yes (laughs) so is it just articles becoming out and then people talking about it on online forums or on Twitter or writing counter articles if they can. Like how what what is happening here? What does this like look like in, so, in real time, I guess? To start off with, it was uh, just a huge shitstorm on on Twitter, Facebook, um, YouTube, lots of uh, videos and counter videos going on. Then the gaming press weighed in. But they were pretty much all on one side, and any gaming press outlet like uh, like the Escapist at the time mm-hmm. that tried to take a more moderate stance or look at both sides or or even be slightly pro gamergate in some ways, they ended up suffering a huge negative publicity backlash from the rest of the games media to, to sort of force them in line. Okay. So that didn't go well. They did a bunch of interviews with people, including myself, who were involved in Gamergate, and then were kind of forced to retract them. Okay. Um, I think that kind of, that probably helped push the escapist into closing down, and now it's reopened with a more kind of orthodox <laughs> editorial oh. team, shall we say. Okay. Um, and then it, it began to bleed into more things. Uh, a bunch of new gaming news websites and review sites popped up like um niche gamer and um is it tech raptor no my uh, a bunch of other sites popped up okay um to serve the the kind of the the actual gaming community okay uh and to put their side of the story forward they never got as much traction as the existing sites but traffic on a lot of the existing sites that were that are now turned on their own audience began to plummet and um, i imagine even you know, even bigger sites like Gorka uh, began to suffer from the backlash. There was a big campaign to to boycott advertisers and um, and games that advertised on these sites. That's part of what really hurt Gorka. I mean, the the whole Kogan lawsuit finished them off. Uh, right, but that's we were... right. Yeah, that yeah. that that's like a whole nother. I don't even yeah. know, man. I've heard of that but... though. Yeah, but apparently at its height, Gamergate was also costing them about a, a, a million dollars a month or something oh. in in lost revenue, lost advertising revenue, because okay. we we were doing these mass email campaigns, kind of adopting the the tactics of the other side to to contact advertisers and tell them, did you know that this site is attacking its own audience? You know, okay. do you really want to be associated with that sort of thing? Right. I'm not a fan of boycotts personally. I didn't particularly like that tactic. But there's no real denying its effectiveness. Um, it did cost a lot of people a lot, a lot of money, um, and it did force some of the gaming sites to start enacting their own ethical rules that they were supposed to be enacting. Okay. Yeah. You know, meanwhile, yeah, but it, yeah, it, it just spread. It became all-encompassing. It was, it was everywhere and and everything. It was, um, it was well, really. It's like, a cult- do you want to be a racist? Do you want to be a sexist? Is that that seems kind of how. It, yeah. It's being framed, and, and as opposed to maybe asking um, questions that I could say, I haven't heard. They're they're all sweeping generalizations from what I'm hearing from you, and I mean we should be okay to have criticism, but it sounds like you, the the community had trouble even finding something that was a good faith criticism is what it sounds like. Yeah. Um, and it was just impossible to get heard to start with. And Can you talk about your role in Gamergate? Because t- that ha- is how you start your book, is talking about being from inside. So can you tell me about where you were in this? 
Um, because I'd been so heavily involved in the fight back against censorship and, and moral panic in tabletop games and to, to a lesser extent in the in the 90s with the previous moral panic there mm -hmm. and as well around around the music scene and, and so on um this was another one of those fights to me and it was a no-brainer that i would that i would get involved in this because i'm not a free speech absolutist i think the, the harm principle is is a good there's a good rule of thumb there, mm -hmm. but this was so obviously people trying to force an ideological agenda on people that, that didn't want it um, and trying to push censorship that depended on accepting these, these ideological premises and this idea that media could somehow warp your fragile little mind and, and turn you into a, a Nazi or a misogynist or, you know, previously a Satanist or whatever. Mm -hmm. Of course, I was going to get involved in this mm -hmm. fight. Um, and yeah, you know, I had a reason reasonable audience at the time. Um, yeah, you know, I, I could reach quite a few people, and I wanted the tabletop community and the writing community and the heavy metal community mm -hmm. to to all get involved as well because this was this was coming for all of us this this thing, and I think that's proven true. We've had Comicsgate and and other things since that have shown that this fight is just just spread it's oh i don't really, even like, know what comicsgate is i've not heard of that one yeah oh so, that's another show okay that's <laughs> another show i'm not yeah. so involved in that one okay because, like, it's just it, it, it it's different okay um so yeah i, I was obviously going to get involved in this but because it was so hard to get gamergate's message out because the media was such a a monolith in its presentation of this as being a, a misogynistic harassment you know racist group it was really hard to get traction with anybody to get them to understand what was what was really going on and you know what, what drove me down into that into that pit of depression at the time was you know people i'd known for years were refusing to listen to me mm -hmm. were, were cutting me off were they in uh, the press or were they in, um, the, in, more, in games? Or in, like, were they gamers? More in the game design community. I mean, there's this fair bit of crossover between analog and, and digital game designers. Okay, so um, the gamer, so the gamer community itself was sort of split, splintered. Yeah, yeah. Oh, um, I didn't realize that. I thought it was sort of like the journalists and then the gaming community. So it, within the no, gaming that, community. Yeah, the, what the, this is what I think is the fundamental and key important difference between this moral panic and previous moral panics mm -hmm. previously you had the community kind of unified fighting against an external aggressor okay right so whether it be uh the church or Tipagore and the pmrc or you know or frederick wortham and concerned parents going all the way back to comics it was mm -hmm. always you know the the fan the the nerd the geek community united against an exterior foe right this time while some of the, the the enemy was outside, there were also people inside. So there were factions of game designers who wanted to make more woke games, which would be fine, but they also wanted to stop other people making unwoke games. Okay. Um, and yeah, and our own media had turned against us. Um, and there, and there were splits within the community itself. Um, and a lot of people bought into that harassment narrative because trolls were having a field day attacking both sides and, and creating... Because it could be true. Problems. That's the that's the thing is the, the exaggeration or the stereotype, I guess, of this could, could be... Tr it, there's always a bit of truth there. Yeah, I'm sure that... I'm sure there's a kernel of truth to it. Right. But it was in the interests of um the opposite side to gaming gate it was in their interest to play up the trolls as being genuine right it was in their interest to present and to publicize the horrible nasty comments that they got from throwaway accounts or or whatever else um but yeah i can i can attest from personal experience trolls were going after the other side as well but it, it wasn't in our interest to blow that up because we were arguing that yeah, trolls are going to troll. You, you know, it's an important internet survival skill to to mm -hmm. learn to discern trolls from people who are being sincere. Mm -hmm. And we wanted to focus on the arguments, so we did, we didn't want to concentrate so much on the on the trolling. 
Oh, okay. So do you think that it would have made a difference if for some, I guess if for tactical reasons, there is a sort of, okay, well, they're showing, so we better show too that we're not just the aggressors here, that this isn't just, like, do you think that would have made a difference or not? Um, I mean, there were efforts in Gamergate to, to counter the trolling. You know, we were reporting troll accounts. We Okay. We tracked down a, a Brazilian tabloid journalist who was tweeting the, the most vile things at Anita Sarkeesian. Mm -hmm. Never got any thanks for, for that. You know, right. so eventually we, we gave up trying. We gave up trying to show that we were sincere because okay. no nobody was listening and it, it made no difference. So. Okay, so it seems like it's... Okay, so the, you, you mentioned something about being able to survive on the internet regarding... Um, being able yeah, to yeah. distinguish trolls. And yeah. was that a need for mainstream media or the normies, as <laughs> you mentioned? <laughs> so um, was that needed before in the way that maybe, like the, I'm trying to get, is this, this may have been new, the need to be able to understand what trolling was for the mainstream media and for those of us who don't, didn't yeah. know before was that maybe why because that wasn't a discerning that wasn't able to be discerned at this time because the internet is a new thing still ish yeah. at that um, time i also think a lot of people are very used to a kind of modern cleaned up internet you know they only interact with the internet via facebook and only via their friends on Facebook or whatever, so they're, they're unaware of this kind of history. And what and year uh, would that be? Sorry, was, is this in 2015? Uh, 2014, 2015, 2014, things really 2015. Do you think people really knew off. about trolls before 2013? <laughs> the trouble is that the meaning of troll has been in flux. Um, okay, people so, who who are instigators, who, who you, you yeah. can't just be like, these are the other side we know like you know oh well yeah. maybe this is someone who's specifically trying to get at us anyone because they're just jerks and they're not yeah. on any side that for kind me, of definition of troll yeah for me i would define a troll as someone who is trying to get a rise out of you by being insincere and provocative. yes and they don't even really care about the thi yeah the issue they're yeah. just like, they, they, they just they, they, they just want to rise so they'll, they'll go into pro-life groups and they'll spout pro-abortion material yeah they'll they'll go into pro-choice groups and they'll spout pro-life material right. they don't yeah. care they don't give a fuck all they're, they're after is a reaction yeah yes that, okay um, so do you think people knew to be aware or wary of these sort of players pre-2013 not on 4chan <laughs> or, or the chan yeah or like that. um if you're involved in gaming, if you're involved in internet culture at all, if you're involved in online culture at all, you should know. You should okay. be able to discern. If you're part of the mainstream media, I wouldn't expect you to get it. Okay, so that so this might is where be I why. Think, they... Yeah, but this this is where I think some some kind of malfeasance comes in because people who are in the games media should know. Okay. But they were okay. presenting fairly obvious you know troll comments and so on as if they were genuine as if it was sincere misogynistic harassment or whatever and it was usually pretty obvious that it wasn't okay um, okay i think so... at, at one point anita sarkeesian put out this um blog post or something with a hundred examples of of harassment and i actually took the time to sit down and go through it and track oh, them back good for you okay most most of the accounts had disappeared a whole bunch of the comments seemed like legitimate criticism and there were a tiny fraction of it was what you could probably genuinely call harassment okay and yet she'd called all of that harassment you know just disagreement or people trying to debate particular points or whatever and she'd presented it all as harassment. i mean it can seem overwhelming uh, i've done things online that have had hundreds of people messaging me and it does get overwhelming but it doesn't mean they're all trolls it is. It's It's sort of, I don't want to say lazy in um, a sort of the kind of seven deadly sin sloth lazy. It, it's it's the laziness of, psych, of our psychology to do blanket statements because we want to protect ourselves and they're all attacking. So yeah. I imagine that might have something to do with it probably because I imagine she was getting probably thousands yeah. and thousands. So, and uh, as we already covered, she didn't really 
uh, I don't think she really understood or, or knew gamer culture or right. internet so culture. Right, so she might anything. not even understood the troll thing. Well, because I imagine that's what me mainstream media and the pile on and the gate likeness, I suppose, of it. Well, no, maybe the gate is like the the. I don't want to say conspiracy theory, but the conspiracy of these different mm. uh, people getting a leg up because of relationships or whatever. Um, but yeah. the, the the mobbings and the pot being stirred, it sounds like it is... This is what I was theorizing just when I wanted to talk to you about this. Is It seems sort of like the first like indie thing to meet cult like the out outside culture from the internet and because the outside culture didn't really understand or discern what trolls were that yeah. this sort of a phenomenon happened that was stoked the fires were just so stoked by yeah. by beyond the indie media sorry i keep saying indie media the gamer media i guess yeah, like the, you said, um, the Guardian. Is that yeah. does that sound about correct, or will you correct me if there if I'm reading into um, it? Well, I, th I think the mainstream media, like, like the Guardian, um, yeah, uh, like like others, other others, other newspapers, other TV shows, the items. I think they're just they're just lazy. Okay. So they just went with they just went with what they were told. Um, this is a good headline. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that, this this is a good headline. This is a good story. It fits, yeah, the the kind of paradigm of the previous tech stories we've done. Oh, there aren't enough women in STEM. Why aren't there more women in STEM? Is it sexism? Yeah, you know what's going on. This fits that narrative, and okay. and the you know that you know, so that's the tack we're going to take on it. And this is what our friends in the games media are, are telling us. Our so friends that in must the games right. media, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. So they'll just go with that. And it's also a story. It's like sweet. Let's. Why wouldn't we want to have a yeah. a good story out because we'll make money? So yeah, and it, it's it's good clickbait. You know, you've yeah. got a, you've got your your damsels in distress or your or your minorities in distress, and you've got Although this non damsel in distress is a trope <laughs> that our friend exactly. Anita was very against. And girls, pick yourselves up and be your own hero. So <laughs> the irony is a little is not bit of irony it. for you. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Well, so I I also think we weren't helped by being associated with the right wing okay okay then let's is it okay why are gamers associated with right wing why why did this happen okay they're not <laughs> but, so why um, were they associated of... how did that okay this this will take a little bit of explanation okay um, yeah okay so a, a lot of this idea has come about post hoc a lot of people try to try to blame gamergate for trump um, oh, which, okay. That's which a I don't little think, bit like bringing history back up and. Yeah, which I, I don't think that's really um, particularly accurate. There were surveys done during the height of Gamergate, and the overwhelming majority of respondents were, if, if you know the political compass, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, the vast majority of Gamergate were in the bottom left quadrant. That's left libertarian. I was just, I'm like, I would, if I was going to guess, I wouldn't know for left or right, but I would have definitely guessed libertarian. Yeah. And I don't know why it just feels right. Uh, yeah. I think the whole anti censorship thing ten, uh, you know, tends okay. to lend gamers to a more libertarian stance. And I think because gamers were early adopters of the internet, they're kind of used to that kind of freedom. So okay. that would, that would be my off the top of my head guess. Right. So weird then that we get asso got associated with the right. So okay, how, how did that happen? Yeah. So there was no press that was willing to take Gamergate's side or even report remotely accurately on what was going on. Anyone who, you know, even tried to say anything ab about the other side of the argument tended to get shut down hard, and their their articles would get revised, and the you know the the slightly accurate statements would would disappear uh, enter milo yiannopoulos and breitbart <laughs> who were at the start the okay. the only people to report accurately on gamergate and why wouldn't if they're not on your side why would they do that looking back i think a lot of it was an attempt to exploit the situation and and just get clicks i mean every media outlet is after clicks they couldn't probably get as many from taking the same line as everybody else. 
but they probably saw an opportunity there. Okay, we'll take Gamergate's side. Good that old capitalism. We'll get, Let's see. We'll get a see. whole bunch of them clicking on our site, looking at our adverts. They'll become fans of us because we're we're supporting them. Okay. Um, so I, I mean, I, I remember at the time I was entering a note of caution on this. You know, this is a really right wing site. I mean, mm -hmm. it's good that our story's getting out there, but let's be a little bit cautious. Yeah. Um, but a lot of people really kind of went into it. Yeah, you know, I've not particularly got anything against uh, conservatism, very right. left, left wing myself. But you know, we fight it out in the in the marketplace of ideas, and yeah. you know that that's how we determine who wins. But the association. Even though we were getting our story out, which seemed like a good thing at the time, I think long term, the association with the right, the association with with Milo, with Breitbart, um, with Adam Baldwin, I think is the is the correct Baldwin, uh, it didn't do us any favors at all okay. um, because we then got tarred with the with the conservative brush. Brush, I know. So, I yeah. So I've just been thinking. I think that. The thing that, because sometimes you can find results in a sort of nefarious way, and I guess I shouldn't say nefarious, but like the the sort of slut shaming of Zoe Quinn with her ex boyfriend at Lover Scorned. Uh, yeah. You you even said yourself you're like oh, okay, this is your guy's business, you know. This is yeah. It it does sort of have this. Um, if he hadn't have. You don't do that with with dudes typically, right? The the sort of at least with regards to the uh, the four chan sort of I'm gonna post this and I'm I'm just hypothesizing because I'm not on those sites <laughs> just to be clear. But I imagine just from my knowledge of men and women and also just I I mean you know an is doesn't equal an ought and so I understand that the way it is is evolutionary biology wise women it, it has had being virtuous in you know like yeah. it, it works for you to know what your their offspring is for males so i understand i'm not trying to moralize here it's just a literal na nature has caused our culture to want until birth control anyway has caused us to want our women to stay uh with the same dude so that dude can know it's his offspring right so i understand yeah. that so i do want to be clear i'm not trying to take the you know um the feminist uh bent here but it is sort of something that does happen to women this the sort of oh you slept around i'm gonna i know especially in a male space i know this will hurt you because you hurt me yeah so so that oh. kind of rubs you the wrong way knowing all this information kind of was obtained through that for me yeah anyway. yeah I, I can see how that would happen what i found interesting though was um i think if the genders had been reversed uh -huh. i don't think anyone would have been as hateful or dismissive of of the boyfriend's post a lot of women okay. will warn each other about bad dudes right um, um, there was a, okay. there was, there's been a couple of cases in American universities where women have put up lists of dangerous men in, in women's bathrooms and so on. You know, it's, it's, it's slanderous, you know? It's a framing because you don't say, look at this girl, she's dangerous. If you're looking at from the, the male, it's, it's like, look at her. Like it, it is a sort of shame yeah. at lens as opposed to. Not that it's necessarily right, but like watch out for these guys yeah. again. All what it, how our species has evolved and different frames of different yeah. the different genders. But, so I, I mean, you were saying sorry. I, I I feel that he what he did, like say, if the genders had been reversed, would have been lauded and th and thought of as a good thing. You know, okay. warning. Oh, this guy is a player. He'll he'll fuck around behind your back, or he'll use you. You know that. If a woman says that about a man, I think that's more accepted. But because yes. he's a man saying it about a woman, and, and, and he, but he's not even doing a warning. That's the thing, right? He, unless yeah. maybe he was, and I don't know how it was worded. Um, I can't remember exactly. It's quite, it's quite it's, a long it, it time is, ago. It, it is a sort of subtlety but, of framing, right? And again, not yeah. that it's necessarily right. It just it's sort of how it's read by yeah. women, read by men, and the sort of hate comments that um 
a man would get are sort of mm. you da- you dangerous well, uh, whatever versus like oh you slutty woman like yeah. there's different backlashes Dur- right during that first kind of um burst when it, when it was about the sleeping around and I wasn't interested particularly mm-hmm. um I did go back later to try and see where this had all come from okay um but a lot of ire from the kind of people who were reveling in the scandal was directed at him really you know, oh you're you're such a beta cuck you know letting yeah. her you know let, yeah that this happened so behind it wasn't your back pile, you like, didn't know. how much did she get like it wasn't just a pile on of like so before all the stuff came out when it was yeah. when it was the straw when it was just when you it was know, when she was when she was the archduke <laughs> like when yes. it was just you know the sort of before all the the bomb being dropped of information yeah did she get oh, i want to interview her anyway i, wanna... I just want to know like well how because well read read her book she's got a book out as well though okay. it's not it's not as um well i'm bound to say that. it's not as good as mine it's better it's well... better edited but it's much more of a kind of personal account. Because I'm just, okay, I'm just really, I I want to look at it a little bit devil's advocate. I, I do agree about the moral panic part. But I do yeah. just want to, because you well, know, I know if anyone's watching, I don't want them screaming like, why didn't she ask this? Why didn't, you know, because um, I don't want to be a, like, oh, you're a woman, you failed us, you know? <laughs> but but I well, do look, I do have a bit of a, a you know I feel bad for the slut shaming because that sucks. Yeah. I yeah, wonder I'm, how much shame she felt and received from from the beta dudes, right? <laughs> I I I would agree, and like I said, I was not interested in that. I didn't see that it was anybody's business, right? And I just thought, ah, just wait, it'll blow over that part. Yeah, you know, at the time I was still pretty much one of her supporters, okay. and she had gotten quite a bit of hate beforehand okay. for the the work that she'd been involved in which was probably not particularly justified but yeah again i would just write that off as, as trolling for the most right. part okay. um the troll oh, right back to the trolls yeah oh. so, so I, I i sympathize with the with the whole slut shaming thing but i rem- I, I don't remember the exact contents of the email that the ex-boyfriend dropped the the, the okay. blog post sorry um but I do remember that I came away from it with the feeling that he had been emotionally abused, that she okay. was emotionally abusive um, and manipulative. Okay. Yeah. Whether everything that was in there is true or not, right. I don't know. So I'm not saying that that's true, but that was the impression that I that I came away with, that he was warning other men that she might get involved with, that she was manipulative and abusive. And okay. Well, okay, yeah, that, so that, again, I, I, and it's it, not just women who get scorned; it's a lover scorned, and and some of it may have been because it was from a place of like deep hurt. Yes. Okay. So, so I can see people saying, "Well, this information should never have come out because of the means by which it was acquired." But of course, the information is important. It is something that. Was it? Oh, it seems like an investigative journalist's dream to me. Of okay, who did get an up on their a bump in the you know yeah in their he, he, stuff through personal relationships without it being um, stated that oh I might be biased because I had this person as a former roommate yeah. or a former it was a former like <laughs> boyfriend or girlfriend. It seems like like this would be something that you'd imagine the the gaming journalists would want to investigate to to look into who looked into it it was it the gamers who looked into it it was, it was the gamers themselves who looked into it the journalists just didn't particularly seem to be interested because i think the the, the, the crosshairs were on them a couple of more independent journalists did look into it um oh. Like, why wouldn't they just look into it to disprove it? Okay, this seems... Like... I'm trying to do shout-outs shout to people who did do a good job. Now, okay. Brad Glasgow Brad, Brad Glasgow is one of them. Okay. Uh, and the SPJ, Society of Professional Journalists, um, particularly one one guy whose name escapes me. Okay. Um, they did a good job. The SPJ actually held a, a, a meeting um, to, to discuss all of this, and... 
because Gamergate was consistently and constantly quoting the SPJ's list of journalistic ethics as, you know, this is how you should behave. These, these are the rules you're supposed to be following and, and you're not. So they were quite sympathetic, though a bomb threat was called in on that meeting. OK. Which just goes to show that the harassment and so on wasn't wasn't one way. Uh, Brad Glasgow's done uh, done some brilliant breakdowns. I don't know if his book has come out. He was another person who was going to be writing a book on Gamergate, but we'll uh, we'll see. Is are are there any articles that on like yeah? Say, that, um, that... If you just if you just uh, search, search Brad Glasgow and Gamergate, you should find plenty. He's okay. uh, usually pretty pretty responsive on Twitter as well. If you want to okay. get in touch with him there. Okay, so the yeah, I'm just trying to I I. I it seems to me like this would be, if you want to get to the heart of it, of how, like, if you want to, I guess, discredit uh, this whole thing, rather than saying you're misogynists, racists against minorities and gay, whatever, it seems like you would want to debunk the conspiracy of it all of all of the um i guess the, the 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 bribery not bribery but what is it the the sort of corruption the corruption yes so you'd want to sort of debunk that and be like okay so they said this person was connected like you know i i, I imagine yeah. the wall with the string <laughs> yeah. pinned to this picture and that pic you know like it yeah. seems like you'd want to okay let's okay well, let's do this let's 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 make our own wall let's follow the leads like the, I, yeah. I actually am like man if i was a reporter and this is happening this would be my my sto these would be my stories to to chase down these leads uh, talk I, to the people i think the games journalists weren't interested in doing that because well they didn't have the have the time it wouldn't be something that would necessarily be a be a money spinner and a lot of them were guilty as hell so they they wouldn't want to look into oh, it oh because it's about the journalists themselves of and, course and it's, and it's so cliquey as well that you know if one of them stepped out of line and did start to investigate the rest of them would turn on them and discredit them and they might never work again oh my goodness um, okay but this is so like a movie uh, where like the you can see the the journalist the sort of mr smith goes to washington <laughs> where like it's uh, like you know this whole thing is corrupt and i'm gonna yeah. find the you know it, it and 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 i don't know i would almost say if you wanted to chase it down to start off even wanting to disprove it with the facts that seems yeah. almost like yeah. it would have made I, 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 sense I think the mainstream media was not interested in doing that because they I, I still think they don't quite have a handle on how important and uh, you know, economically important and how big gaming is now. I, 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 it's another problem with lack of understanding, I think. Right. I mean, it's big. It's bigger than Hollywood now, gaming. So oh, you could be a billion. professional gamer and make yeah, sure you take care and, of these. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you, can, you can make bank yeah. doing that. Um, but they still perceive gaming as being this uh, it's a hobby, something the kids do, you know. Um, Mario Brothers. Yeah, kind of, Atari. kind of beneath notice. Yeah. And a lot of this was centered around the indie gaming scene. I mean, there are crowdfunding attempts that that raise you know millions of millions of dollars. So it, it's still not particularly small potatoes. But okay. Yeah. What this. There was an old saying about academia is that the fighting's so vicious because the stakes are so small, which I think is how a lot of people yes, kind yeah. of think, kind of thought of that. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, is, I, so I don't think it was accurate. Is the gate okay? So GamerGate, if is it is it um, just the um, this sort of uh, corruption amongst the uh, the the journalists and certain gamers, or is it that they were, I guess, uh, pushing in their uh, reviews or whatnot, or is it the uh, mob that surrounded it, calling a, 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 against you know the certain members of the gaming community? Is, is that whole thing Gamergate? Uh, yeah, I think all of that is, the whole is thing Gamergate. Is. The okay. whole thing is um, okay. the co the core of it is that the games media was corrupt and in bed literally and figuratively okay. with with game game makers 
Okay. Um, then there were long-standing problems of financial corruption. Um, so companies paying people for good reviews or threatening them if they wouldn't give them a good review, threatening to withdraw access, things like that, which you can't really run a games review business if you don't get early access to games. Mm -hmm. Because if you wait to review it until mm -hmm. after it's out, it's it's too late. Okay. Um, yeah, so there was all that long kind of long standing stuff. And there was a lot of resentment building up about the kind of ideological push into gaming and the fact that a lot of the, the games media weren't reviewing games they, they were vetting them against a particular political orthodoxy right now i've i've got nothing against games being political or tackling political topics i think the the issue that i have and that a lot of other people have is it's not political games it's games as propaganda that are trying to impress upon you a, a particular point of view okay. um it's kind of ironic because they were saying that games were making you misogynistic and whatever else, which we were ref were refuting. Okay. And at, at the same time, these same people were trying to use games <laughs> to make you be something. So right. that's, uh, is yeah. is there okay? Because you mentioned before about with the the D and D and other th like there were studies that were done to disprove yeah. this you know, wandering through the tunnels syndrome or whatever. <laughs> so have there, is there data, is there any studies to show about the, uh, this sort of certain games making you misogynistic? Um, it's a really hard thing to study in the first place. And it's also really hard to get decent studies because usually a study into this kind of thing will either be backed by the gaming industry who obviously want one result or activists and charities who obviously oh, want wonderful. another result. So uh, the, the, as best as we can tell, um, and I'm reasonably recently read up on the, on the literature on this, as best as we can tell, there is a very short time increase in, a, in aggression after playing a violent, a violent game because you get hyped, your adrenaline yep. spikes. Okay. But it, it, it doesn't last very long. There okay. don't seem to be any long-term psychological effects. Um, going, going back to the D&D &D days, uh, there was the Suicide Association that, oh, that was held oh, with the I games. Oh, I didn't realize it was that. Oh, right, you did mention that. Okay. Yeah. That, that was studied, and it was found that people who played role-playing games were less likely than average to commit suicide. Okay. Um, they have a little bit of a the, community, probably. Yeah, I, I, there was a problem back then with one of the studies that I think we might be running into today as as well. Gamers, when they when they were tested, seemed to score high for psychopathy um, in certain ways. So it would seem like they they lacked empathy, okay, or they couldn't understand other points of view. But then they did follow up studies, and what they discovered was that when when a gamer sat down to to fill out one of these papers they understood that the situation that they were being presented with was fictional, that it wasn't real. So the reason they were scoring, you know, seemingly low empathy, high, high psychopathy, was because they, they knew that the scenario wasn't real and had no consequence. And they were better able to discern reality from fantasy rather oh. than less, less able. So oh. that was really interesting. That is very I, interesting, actually. I suspect we might that might be foxing some of the studies into into computer games as well. Okay, because I th it seems like an important thing to study. Ideology aside, I would like to yeah. know. I, I think that the violence thing has been, but what about the misogyny against women? Has that yeah. like like, like I, I understand you say it's kind of hard to to make a study, but. Well, then, then it's hard and figure it out because it, it, yeah. it seems like we should. I mean, we want we we want to know so we can address it for good or ill, right? But again, the problem is this kind of ideological slant has ended up. Um, I don't want to use the word infected because it's got so many negative connotations, mm -hmm. but uh, it'll have to do. Uh, this, this ideological slant has also infected what what game scholarship there is. Um, Digra, uh, who do a lot of studies into games, they were swept up in in the whole Gamergate theme because a lot of their studies were being used to attack Gamergate and seem to be excusing this 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 ideological slant that was going on. 
Okay. Un unfortunately, one of the results of Gamergate has been a massive hostility towards academic investigation into games because it just ha it's not seen as legitimate. I would not want to bury my head in the sand. I want to know with the control group and studies and large numbers. Um, I, yeah, I think yeah. it's really important to know these things and, and have, I don't know what are reputable, um, study groups well enough. Uh, but if someone outside of the gaming industry or that side, it seems like it should be taken up, but I guess someone has to take an interest in those sort of yeah. studies. Um, and if there's not a lot of money in something, then it tends to be the activists who have the have the passion and the interest. Right. But they, when they approach these things, they have a conclusion in mind, which is kind of backwards to how it science. Is. Oh, it so is. Like I, I, oh, legitimately, I'm. I really. I. I would imagine it probably would be similar to the violence thing. Yeah. Only an amount of time, and then it. You know, whatever goes away yeah but um... I, I'm, I'm I'm a skeptic and an atheist and I was at one time pretty active in that community and I am constantly and consistently struck by the similarities um, between creationism and and activist pseudoscience okay yeah they, they both start from a conclusion and then they look for evidence to back their conclusion rather than looking for the facts right and, and discerning what what's what's true and right and and real and that's it's just so counter to the whole idea of science i don't know how people can fool themselves you right. know i i i don't want my preconceptions to be to be borne out i want to know what's true independent of my preconceptions right. yeah and you know? that's sort of the whole wanting to know what's true with the whole with like oh why didn't someone go some journalist go and look at the the web yeah. chart and and look for themselves I mean, you know it, to get to yeah. the truth it seems like that that wasn't a route that was taken like you said because no. of the corruption but yeah but hearing it hearing all of this for i guess like more or less the first time i am like why didn't they go to the source and why don't they want to find out why don't we want to know if it really does cause this that or the other it, so go, going over to okay i want to i i just would do want to ask quickly this before because i think it's been about maybe an hour, maybe longer. Okay. But okay, do you think that it 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 might be difficult? It, it, or I guess I don't want to frame it. How is it for women in the industry? Now I know. Like, so I mean, obviously, you are not a woman. So, you <laughs> but from well, what you have heard, I mean, you must have heard a multiple perspectives of females I, in the industry. I, the I do industry. know. I do know women in the industry. Um, my partner works in STEM, but not in not in gaming. Okay. Um, but she is a gamer. Um, well, or gamers as well. Uh, it could be yeah. both. It, it is really hard to answer. I don't really think there are there are barriers there for women that aren't also there for men. I think yeah, we were talking about we were kind of cagely <laughs> talking about gender differences earlier. Right. And I do think whether it's genetic or environmental, not not sure, you know, jury's still out. But there are differences in gender interest in different things. And while more and more women have been getting into gaming, it is still predominantly a male sphere. Mm -hmm. That can be off-putting to some women just, just by the nature of uh, they feel uncomfortable around a lot of men. I, mm -hmm. I don't know. But there's a lot of effort being put into getting women into STEM. Men are generally over the moon to see more more women into gaming and understanding okay. their hobbies and everything. Okay, but let, let's, yeah. okay, because there's this sort of uh, caricature of the, 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 this is our space. This is our male space. Can you please leave? I don't think that it's, that it's a male space. I don't think the gamers see it that way. I think they see it as it's a, it's a gamer space. And we want to be sure that you know what you're talking about. So that this vet, okay. this vetting, this vetting process that goes on, 
it doesn't just go on for women, it goes on for men as well. Okay, but think, women are higher in trade agreeableness and men are lower <laughs> typically. I know there's a lot of overlap, yeah. but if you are getting that sort of uh, frat boy, ra like, you know, whatever. Hazing. Phasing, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's a phasing, hazing. Yeah, yeah. So if you're getting that, if you're, and I, I totally would, would be like, I'm high, I'm high ish in, you know, I'm pretty high in trade agreeableness. So I would be like, they're so mean and jerks and no thank you. Like, like <laughs> I, I, I think I, but I know, but for a lot of, and some men would be like, wow, they're so mean. I'm going to go. A lot of yeah. men would too, but a lot of women would probably be like that. And a lot of yeah. dudes are like, but, um, I don't care. I, I'm trying to differentiate between the the, the intent okay. that the guy that the guys are having okay. and, and the result. So they're not intending to be mm. off-putting okay. or to gatekeep or to be mean or whatever. They're just uh, the the irony is they're treating the women the same as they would anybody else. So they're not necessarily treating them as women, and I think that's where some of the okay. some of the disconnect comes in. Oh, okay, um, um, should I start and see how it goes? <laughs> Maybe. Oh, I don't uh, know. It's scary. I'm hard. I can't play games though, so I'd be horrible. <laughs> so I would probably that, get rejected. Just, just remind that reminds me actually. There was there was a study mm -hmm. um, into into sexism and, and attitudes. Okay. Um, so so there's there's benevolent sexism, which would be things like opening a door for a woman or yeah you know, that sort of thing. Okay. Um, and then there's more kind of aggressive and obvious sexism. Oh, women can't do this. Women can't do that. Women are inferior, and so mm -hmm. on. But this this study found that if a man does not engage in benevolent sexism, like if, if he doesn't hold the door open for the woman, he is perceived as being sexist by women. Okay, some would call it chivalry. <laughs> yes. So I think maybe what we're seeing is that gamer dudes ha have taken on board, oh, let's just treat everybody the same. So, okay, she's a chick. Eh, well, yeah, I don't want to be sexist, so I'll be horrible to her <laughs> in the same way I would a guy. You know, okay. and um, so I think that's This is some of it. interesting. Okay, I've never thought of it this way before, and I find it... Really, it's very interesting, isn't it? Because it, 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 it I, seems I, like it, it, it seems real. It seems like that might be what it is. Yeah. I think there is another difficulty um, that, that women do genuinely face in, in, these, in these arenas in that they constantly have to prove themselves okay. um, in a way that men don't. Once a guy is accepted, you know, pretty much that's it. But the fact of the matter is that a lot of the time, women that might turn up at events or whatever, less so these days, more more in the past, but you know, they would be somebody's girlfriend or they would just be hanging about or they weren't interested in what was going on. So I think they get checked more often. And okay. I think that's inc probably incredibly aggravating to have to constantly prove your, your credentials. Okay. So I, I can understand that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I, I Okay. In person, I think another thing that some women might find off-putting is guys will fall over themselves to try and help. Um, and that can often delve into what they call mansplaining, or they can just be okay. kind of smotheringly enthusiastic. Okay, so that's uh, the other side. Like, they're like, they're too benevolent. Yeah, getting... I mean... Um, I remember one time I was at, I was in a gaming store, yeah, you know, just just looking through the board games for some, for something to buy. So a group of guys, young young guys playing D and D, uh, and a girl comes in and starts looking at stuff, and they're like, like immediately, hey, hey, do you want to play? Come on, you know, sit down. Yeah. Just too much. Too much. It was it was too intense. Okay. Yeah, I just <laughs> so she's like up kind of running off. away. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But their their intentions were good. Okay. They're, they, you know, they were tr just trying to be helpful and nice and lacking in social skills. Okay, so there's that and feeling like the mansplaining, like, okay, I'm not an idiot, like that yeah. getting too far. Okay, so yeah, it is, oh, this is, I would love a psychological study, not just so for the, the, the misogynist thing, but like for um, what is perceived by women as oh well, like here's all the negatives here's the gatekeeping i'm encountering here's this and then from the guys and, and what you said about the the girlfriends just hanging about like yeah that that's, i think that's... well well that might be 
from how it started about women having to always prove themselves because they were they're like, oh, well, we have this thing in our space where we want you to be serious. We don't trust yeah. that you're serious because you kind of you, you we, we have this sort of, I guess, stereotype of women being the girlfriend rather than yeah. the actual gamer themselves. Yeah. Is that? Yeah, I think um, that's fair. I think that's changing, though. Um, do you think? Do you I mean, think it's changing these things? I, I do think. Uh, I haven't been to conventions in, in a while, but I used to go quite regularly, and it seemed like every year there were more women. Okay. But it was also the, the nature of the conventions was changing um, in a way that accommodated them, I think. It, it's gender stereotypes again, so, you yeah, know, hashtag not all. But, yeah, more cosplay, mm -hmm. um, yeah, more, more social events, um, different kinds of games, different kinds of panels, okay. yeah, that sort of thing. It's kind of catering to this this emerging audience. Um, okay. And I, I think that's changed. That's changing the nature of the hobby, it's in some good ways, but also in some bad ways. I think that that, that nerd hobbies and and pastimes and media and so on has has gone mainstream. Right. Is great because there's so many more people into it, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but it's also. It, eroded the the gamer identity and it's taken away a lot of that common law i mean we were talking about the um the previous moral panics the, you know those are kind of defining events for mm -hmm. gamers and so was the experience of being bullied of being the the unpopular kid and um, now it's popular yeah that would be so hard popular. to reconcile yeah yeah it's, it's a bit jarring for people who who were into it prior to i don't know to 2000 <laughs> you know right. to us and older older nerds it's a bit jarring to to see normal people right so it almost <laughs> seems it is a it yeah it, it, and it, we don't know how whether it, it, it i can see why it's jarring and it's like well sh should there be a double downing on like well are you real because we don't want to yeah. don't want to appear hostile to and people who are interested the, the other great irony is that these hobbies have been safe spaces for mm -hmm. people who were treated horrendously in school mm. and, and, you know, and, and elsewhere in their lives. And it, it, can't, it can't help but feel that that is now being invaded and, and taken over. Right. Um, yeah, the, that's probably unfair, but I think you have to understand where that feeling comes from. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And again, it doesn't say that we should bar more people. It just explains no. why there would be these sort of feelings of, of yeah, where wh do I why, go now? Yeah. Why there's this gatekeeping, why there's this resentment, why there's this feeling of being displaced from your own home in a, mm -hmm. in a way. A and your own to, tribe. Yeah. A lot to figure out. Mm -hmm. OK, well, this is I think that we've got a lot of good stuff here for an outline and um i mean i know that you literally wrote a book so i know that there's there's so much more in depth but i i had i have a better understanding now um and i hope that uh i think i bet the audience of people who watch this i hope that it helped them to understand it and you could delve deeper people can delve like you gave a couple good things to look up maybe i'll try to link some Good yeah, and um, I'm 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 really trying to be fair to to both sides as much right. as is possible. I know, yeah, you, I I know you weren't. I could tell you 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 were clear about you're like I'm on the pro side, but you're not uh, bad mouthing them, saying that they're all bad. Well, you get attributed ignorance to a lot of it, so <laughs> which is the kinder think, reading than malevolence, right? I, so. think, I think there's a lot of good intentions, and politically and ideologically, I would have. Well, the road to hell agreed. is paved with, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I would have, uh, yeah, politically and ideologically, I, I would agree with a lot of the people who are anti Gamergate on a lot of things. It's just mm -hmm. the way they go about things that I that I have issue with. Right. Okay. Well, thank you so much for chatting today, Grim. Uh, this was so enlightening. So I'm happy to talk again anytime. About okay. I'll, I mean, yeah, I'll I, see I have you. opinions. <laughs> oh, good. Okay. Awesome. Okay. We'll see you later, man. <laughs>